What's kind of nice, I've got a nice computer that can chop off any part that I don't want, so <clears throat> it's recording, but I don't really have to do this part. Okay, so thanks to Diana this morning, she gave a bang-up presentation on exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, often called EPI, and uh, if you're familiar with the pancreas, which she had a diagram here, the pancreas really has two parts, exocrine function and endocrine function. Exocrine means things are going to come out to a duct and go into the lumen of the gut. And endocrine means it's going to release hormones, okay? And so basically she's saying here exocrine function are enzymes. And I don't think she says it right here, but yeah, there she is, buffers. Enzymes and buffers together make pancreatic juice. And so the endocrine cells, uh, you know, make insulin and glucagon, but there's actually two other hormones, so it makes about four hormones that go right into the blood, and the exocrine go out a duct to the gut lumen. And so this is a case, EPI is a case where the pancreas isn't making enough enzymes. And it's very interesting, because if you ever have a case where something's not being made enough of, usually you can supplement, right? You can bring it back up. But if something's being made too high, it's hard to bring it down, like hyperthyroidism in cats. You have to destroy part of the uh, Thyroid. So it's easier to supplement up than bring down. So here it is. So she, it's also known as maldigestion disorder. Mal is bad digestion. Pancreatic acinar atrophy, PAA. Uh, anyway, that's the functional unit of the exocrine pancreas. So these cells are dying and getting smaller. So she's saying here that when the pancreas isn't making enough Protease and trypsin, which works on proteins, not enough amylase making to work on carbohydrates or lipase working on fats. And there's some dog breeds. Most common, but any dog can get it, okay? So that list is fine. Might happen in younger dogs, but can happen at any time in their life. So causes could be congenital, simply means present at birth. It could be something the mother ate that targeted the fetal pancreas. But it's present at birth, or it could be inherited, showing up near the time of birth, or three years later, right? It could be something that's long-term. Or pancreatic injuries, or infections, and if it's a chronic infection, that'd be chronic pancreatitis, which can be many causes. One of the main ones is if you let your dog eat a lot of fat, and it's already overweight, that brings up pancreatitis and it might be a chronic state or acute. So anyway, the bottom line is destruction of these pancreatic cells over time. Weight loss, definitely, and it's weight loss in the face of a normal appetite. The dog will be eating a lot and it looks like your neighbors are gonna think you're starving them. Your neighbors are gonna call you, call the uh, animal care because they're gonna say you're not feeding your dog, but yes, the dog's eating a normal amount or even more. It's just things are passing through even with good nutrition. So malabsorption, maldigestion, because no matter how good the diet is, if the monomers aren't being absorbed, the dog is passing out all those nutrients in the feces. So then you get these loose little feces things, yellow, pale, there might be fat in the feces, steatorrhea, I think is the pronunciation, I was practicing, practicing that before fat, uh, class. Fatty uh, is that, prefix, and discharge, or you can have animals that are eating their feces, coprophagia, because copro means feces, and it ends up being, you. oops, sorry, you can have uh, in, uh, bacterial overgrowth in the face of this condition, or dysbiosis, that basically means bad growth of the bacteria. Also, the animal might have low levels of vitamin B. I'm not sure exactly what causes that. Maybe it's low absorption of vitamin, uh, vitamin B12, I should say. And then, of course, vomiting, maybe. And then here's an example of exocrine insufficiency, and then here's after treatment. And it's very dramatic, right? Your neighbor would think you're starving the dog, but these two dogs are eating the same amount. It's just this dog's not digesting it, this dog is. So just think of it, those two dogs, that's before and after, it's the same dog, but they're eating the same amount. It's just, you're giving them supplements and there's a, uh, 
she comes up with treatments here. So here's another dog. Your, your neighbors would call the police because you're starving the dog, and then this isn't very clear, but recovery is good. Okay, there's all kinds of that. So diagnosis, <clears throat> could do a blood test, could do a fecal test, and I'm not sure exactly what they're looking for, but here, uh, one other test is this trypsinogen-like immunoassay in K9 that we'll see is for K9, and if you have levels less than 2.5, that's usually a good indication that the pancreas isn't making enough uh, enzymes. And then B12 and folate in the blood too if it's uh, a low amount. So treatment, you make sure the, first thing is to make sure you have um, a good ration diet, uh, but then you're gonna give it enzymes, supplement enzymes, pancreatic enzymes. And I can't remember, I think they take maybe pig pancreases and then uh, lipolyze them and get the enzymes out of pig pancreas. Although she didn't say it and I haven't looked it up. Anyway, so, but you can supplement with these powdered products and you put it right in the food. Okay, there's nothing to inject, nothing to give any other place. You put it in the food because you need it in the gut lumen. And she's saying, you know, you can balance things out with some prebiotics and prebiotics with probiotics. And that's kind of controversial, right? Don't you see in the human population, sometimes they're saying maybe the prebiotics and probiotics aren't really necessary. But if you've got that, then usually pets can recover like those two uh, pictures show, the two animals. And if it is due to pancreatitis, that might be more of a temporary condition and it'll maybe resolve by itself. So you can think, you know, it can cure but if it's the loss of those exocrine cells, then there is no cure. You have to supplement with the enzymes. And then she talked a little bit about in cats. It's very similar in cats, although uh, maybe different symptoms, like maybe poor state of the hair coat, and then greasy hair around the anal area. And then you can use the same test, although it's not the canine version. Maybe they have a separate version for feline, and if this Trypsinogen test is less, uh, comes back less than um, eight micrograms. You'll, it's micro, and oftentimes it's abbreviated MCG, but it's micrograms. And there's her sources, and I wanted to show you one of them because I've run into this before. If you ever have a dog with this thing, this uh, EPI for dogs is really a pretty comprehensive site, and we'll show you it here. Um, they even have something on the latest hurricane, it says someplace on this site, it talks about if you have a dog that has EPI and you're in the hurricane area and you can't find these enzymes, contact us, we'll send you them. That's how up to date they are. So, you know, they're looking, but I've seen this site years ago, but they have really got a comprehensive site and let I me mean, they get, if you have a dog with EPI, this would be the place to go for a comprehensive so here they're talking about the hurricane. If you if you have an EPI pet and you can't, if you're desperate for enzymes, get a hold of them. That's pretty good. Pretty good little um, site. That's my story, and that's Diana's story too. I'm sticking to it. Any questions? Anybody ever had an animal with EPI? Anything close? Uh, I haven't had one, but there is one that comes into the vet clinic every two weeks for B12 shots. Oh, comes into the vet clinic every two weeks for B12 shots. Now, why can't the owner give B12 shots? Owner doesn't like needles. Oh, the owner doesn't like needles. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, good. Yeah, there are the needle phobia thing. Well, I don't think it's so much that she just doesn't want to poke her cat. She doesn't want to poke her cat. Yeah, got it. <laughs> okay, see you Monday, guys.